height. 21st June was the birth anniversary of the great French philosopher Jean Paul Sartre, who is best known for his philosophy of existentialism. He was born on 21st June 1905 and left this earth on 15th April 1980. He was a political activist and a French playwright and literary critic, novelist and a leading figure of 20th century uh, French philosophy and Marxism. He was awarded Nobel Prize in 1964 for literature, which he actually did not want to accept, but after a lot of persuasion, he accepted with a lot of reluctance because he believed I am a writer. I want to convey my thoughts and uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, be corrupted with all this idea of popularity and, uh, you know, awards and ceremonies and all that. That was what was his character. Sartre was a revolutionary thinker. He had an open relationship with a prominent feminist and a prominent existentialist philosopher. Simone de Boha. Together, they challenged the cultural and social assumptions and uh, uh, expectations of their upbringing, everything they challenged, you know, which they considered as Boswa in both lifestyle and thought. Sartre described freedom and responsibilities of humans within the skeleton, within the framework of human dignity. That was the beauty of his writings, which meant Existence in all forms, you know, whether it is personal, whether it is philosophical, whether it is social, whether it is cultural or religious. He presented his thoughts in all his works and uh, definitely he was an out-of-the-box thinker, you know. And he did not much care about the stylistics or aesthetics of, uh, you know, while presenting his ideas and uh, he didn't use many literary devices. You know, his writing, the beauty of his writing is they appear simple, but they are very thought provoking until and unless you really get into it, you won't understand it, you know. So he focused only on communicating his thoughts. The conflict between the oppressive spirituality, which he called as oppressive spirituality rather, and then destructive conformity and authentic way of being became a dominant theme of Satra's early works. And... Uh, his works actually, uh, the thought or this thought or insight is reflected in all his major philosophical works, like, um, uh, you know, Being and Nothingness, I think, which he published in 1942 or 43. And Existentialism is a Humanism that was uh, published in 1946 or 47 in those years. So actually, I read Jean Paul Satra. Uh, when I was 18, yes, that is when I met my husband, Dr. Govind. We were staging a play. We were a part of amateur theater group. We were staging a very famous play of, uh, you know, in Kannada literature, that is Kedu Janameja, authored by one of the brilliant uh, playwrights of our time, uh, Dr. Sri, uh, Sri Ranga. And uh, Dr. Govind was 29, and he was a voracious reader and very well-read, intellectual, intelligent, and he was a deep thinker. And he introduced me to French literature. He brought me several books, you know, of uh, Alba Camus, then uh, John Paul Sartre, then Franz Kafka, and also he bought Aurobindo. And do you know something? Govind learned his uh, French only to read all these uh, authors uh, in the original, like, you know. And uh, Sartre's, uh, uh, like, uh, writings appear simple, but they're highly thought-provoking. As just an 18 year or 19 year old, I could read them, reread them two, three times because that ego is there. No, at that time, if I say, Oh, I didn't understand how to ask anybody. So I kept on reading and rereading, but somewhere I would get stuck up. But Govind had all the patience. So he used to explain and then we discussed and I presented my point of view. He presented his point of view. That's how our courtship, in fact, began. It began with literature, it began with theater. All right. Now, Satra's play. No exit, or in French, it's called as his claw, is really very close to my heart. I love this play. You know. The setting of the play is very interesting. It is hell. and But it just reflects the world, world around us, you know. Hell means what? We, we are right inside us also is a hell. 
in our surrounding also is a hell. There is heaven inside us and heaven around us, but we don't realize. So Sartre spoke about this hell. And uh, the typical, uh, you know, style of his plays, he doesn't introduce many characteristics or songs or uh, make it uh, sound like a big theatrical event. No, he's very simple. He, uh, in this play, though, at least only three characters are there. And one usher is there. So I'm not considering him as a character. He just ushers the characters in. So there are three characters who have died and left their mortal remains or mortal bodies in the graves on this earth. They all meet in hell. Now, what, what happens when you meet people? See, we have, uh, like, always we are social beings, you know, we are curious about others' life, what happened, what went wrong, why, what went here. So, we are very fond of telling our own stories. See, just now also I told my story in this. So, that's the human tendency. So, we love to tell our stories, we, tell, we love to narrate our experiences. So, these three characters also, they meet and they start narrating their experiences. And or telling their stories, what happens is they get so deeply involved and intrigued with each other's stories because there is one common idea. What is a common idea? Which Sartre calls it as others. It means other people are torture for us is the basic idea. Now just come away from Sartre and think of our own life. What do we do? Whether it's at home, whether it is your personal zone, whether it's your friendship, whether it is your colleagues, or whether it's at workplace, always we see that we are too good. We can't be anywhere wrong. Only it is others who are troubling us. My boss, nasty. My colleague always tries to put me down. And uh, people are jealous of each other. So like this, everywhere there, we have identified only hell. We don't identify heaven. That we need to reflect. And also what I feel, you know, this is a little out of, away from this context, but whenever I conduct training sessions and um, workshops, I always tell people, you know, especially for corporates and all that, what I tell is, in workplace especially, there is no friend and there is no foe. And there is no permanent friendship, there is no permanent enmity. As long as you are convenient to people, you are helpful to them, and you, you know, uh, fan the egos of other people, you are their friend. The minute your utility is over, you are nobody to them, neither friend nor foe. And if you start growing further and if your presence threatens people, then you become their enemy. So, or if you try to retaliate and give it back, you become their enemy. So, there is nothing like, you know, it, uh, I mean, it's a very funny fact about human beings. The feelings and the emotions, they keep on changing. There is no one permanent emotion or one permanent attachment. You never know when your best friend criticizes you or when your, uh, whom you consider, I mean, foe will start appreciating you. So that is what it is. So anyway, let's come back to Shatra now. He describes this uh, concept of others uh, in his words over and over again, how other people tag us, okay? How other people condemn us, how other people criticize us, how other people become judgmental about us. How they try to pull us down, like frogs, frogs in the well mentality, you all must be knowing it, right? The minute you start uh, climbing the ladder, so 10 monkeys will pull you down, so, or 10 frogs will pull you down, so that nobody goes up. So that is a human tendency again. So then people blame us, and people pull us down, and people try to break us, either physically or mentally. They try to uh, break, uh, break your confidence, break your personality, and sometimes they murder and kill us. Also. So that is what and they hate us. Or so in short, I can say, people around us, what I'm talking of Sartre now, I'm not saying that the world is like this, please understand. So what he describes others, others are the one such lot who try to devour us of our power, who try to make us completely powerless. Then you may say, what kind of a negative idea he is promoting? No, 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 wait, hold on, hold on. But then he says, Whatever others can do, whatever others can, may try to harm you, but they cannot take away the free, uh, I mean, your real freedom, which is within you. This is the central theme of Satra's existentialism. Isn't it very beautiful? So, however much they try to break us, if we are strong inside and if we don't give in, if somebody, see, uh, again, 
in human interactions why we face problems whether it's a marital discord or whether it's a friendship failure whether it's a work relationships or whether it's a i mean you know uh, love between the couples whatever kind of things ego is the culprit everybody has big fat ego because we feel that it is our universal right to criticize others and correct others we never reflect and we don't like when others criticize us or others try to correct us even to this extent that i'll tell you a simple example a student in a classroom talks something or asks something what the, what does the teacher snap of course of course i know i am a teacher listen to me that is a big fat ego and whether it's your yoga instructor whether it's your teacher whether it's your boss or whether it's your manager everywhere this ego burst even your maid servant has a ego so what you must understand is because of this ego there are relationships break and the problems arise all human interactions face problems only because of this ego so we need to control this ego now he doesn't directly talk about ego in this play so then what he says is we go through actually whenever there is any toxic atmosphere created around us you know toxic people are there toxic people every lot of negativity is around us what he says is after all this others cannot take away the freedom that is right but when we are surrounded by such situations and such people we go through a lot of anxiety there is a lot of anxiety am i good enough am i bad enough and you know, am i doing this right am i doing this right so lot of self negative conversation begin within us and that he calls it as nausea now again just reflect on this word nausea you enter a room which is absolutely stinky and uh, you feel like puking you feel nauseated so what is the first thing what you do you try to open the windows oh my god why this time i mean stink is coming you open the windows and if it doesn't go you switch on the fan still it doesn't go what you do you open all the fans and your ac and keep your windows on and go outside in the open to feel that fresh breath of air don't you do that so that is what you are supposed to do when you are facing such lot of people so then he connects it so beautifully that one can you know use his or her freedom what is this freedom we are talking about all of us are free we are born free we will die free also and we come alone on this earth we go back alone on this earth that also uh, from this earth that also we need to understand so what freedom he talks is freedom of thought freedom of choice freedom of your will and which leads to freedom of your action if something is not working just delete it so now to tell you in a modern language if anything is not working or if other person is uh, becoming a anxiety or a uh, you know like it's not gelling control alt delete finish it so you don't have to worry so much about others that okay they are creating the problem and i'm facing the problem no need to get into that conversation so what he says is all our will and action which will lead to all whatever i discussed our choice our thought our will and our actions which will e- either lead to a fight situation or flight situation fight or flight mechanism you must be knowing okay they are it's very popular some other time i'll talk in detail about that so what happens is like then but once that choice is made you understand you are going wrong so you can try to you know reflect and uh, rewire and mend your ways when you are still on this earth so highly philosophical try to understand once you die once you leave this earth why he has taken that hell so every day we go through hell because we we enjoy being uh, in that negative atmosphere we don't want to come out of it there is so much of hatred there is so much of jealousy there is so much of anger we hold on to things you know like uh, uh, we cling on to it so then that is you are in a hell only so death has already occurred to you so you are only living in that uh, dwelling in that hell that is what he means in a larger this thing but once that choice choice is made after death there is no retracing the path or change whatever has happened except for sitting and crying over the milk you have nothing else in your hands to that is what he says so and this kind of a behavior whether it leads to satisfaction or regret will remain with the person forever so that is what the idea he wants to convey in in this play no exit satra affirms the idea that it is nothing but a torture 
or repentance as the case may be when we look back on our past past is if you had bad experiences in past it's a lot of uh, emotional baggage i would call it so you're always moving with a monkey on your back oh she ditched me oh he ditched me and uh, you know my colleague really pulled me down and they do it like you know i mean uh, uh especially at workplace and all that people are there always uh, stabbing i call them golden knights even in relationships also you might find some people they are so sweet on their on your face and they stab you at the back that's a human tendency leave everybody to your uh, their karma and then you have to move on with your own stuff that is what is more important so he says that it is a torture or rep- uh, repentance when we look back on our past so this torture itself is hell you understand hell is not a physical space that we are waiting to die and then reach there by either taking a plane or chitra and chitragupta come according to our scriptures and they take you take the soul and all that who knows i have not seen it so far nor you have seen those who are alive we have not seen we have only read in the scriptures right so what he says is that very hell that torture what we go through when we look at the past only we we don't even repent we we may repent or we may try to live over there but we don't want to come out of it we don't want to mend our ways and that torture he calls it as hell so when we die and leave this world there is no chance to rearrange our uh, life and uh, rewire our brain or repent or release our hurts see first thing important thing is releasing our hurts is very important what are you going to go uh, what are you going to do with all the baggage you collect and go there and in other world and again if you so then what happens is you hold on to grudges you hold on to bad relationships and you constantly think ill of others again next life you are making arrangements for your next life again the same characters will come in your life i to don't want to see any of the toxic people in this life who ever had trouble me i don't want them in my life again so release your hurt that that is very very important this is again my idea i'm talking what he says is there is no time to rewire our brain so you release your hurts when we fail to choose the correct path when we are alive then there is no point that is what he conveys there is no chance for us to change or you know or uh, mend our uh, lifelong events okay uh, which are or melt our rather all the events what we see in the past which are like a frozen thing you are already in himalayas there is a frozen boulder you can't melt it so that is what the idea he gives so there is an uh, this is actually the theme and uh, atmosphere in this play that is no exit where all the three characters there are three characters as i told characteristics characters i told you one is the grassy she is a journalist and uh, ines she is a lesbian and estel a pretty blonde who have died and uh, condemned to unmalleable unchangeable truth of their past action that is the thing so viewers if you want me to summarize and analyze this one of the finest works of uh, satra do let me know in the comment section and i will make a video very soon thanks for uh, watching and please share with the like minded people who are interested in literature and subscribe to my channel so that you get notifications as soon as you i upload any new video thank you have a good evening